Nvidia, Linux, and open source have always had a bit of a weird relationship. We've all seen the Linus Torvalds Nvidia thing. Even after all these years, I still love it. I still absolutely love it. And Nvidia's drivers on Linux, specifically on Wayland, have traditionally been a bit of a mess. Not only being out of tree, but that's a problem generally on Linux, but also just not really being great on Wayland. And over the past year, they have greatly improved to the point of actually being usable. But it would be nice for more of the stack to be open source. Even if that stack doesn't come directly from NVIDIA, just more open source, more good. So for a very long time now, there has been the Novo driver or Nuvo driver, however you're supposed to say it, which often just gets called the open source NVIDIA driver, which for a while was okay. And then it became bad thanks to the shift over to the GSP firmware, where a lot of things that were being controlled by the driver before were now being controlled by the proprietary firmware, which Novo wasn't using at the time. Since then, there has been massive improvements on that front, and now Novo actually makes use of the GSP firmware, and modern GPUs are actually viable with the open source driver without being massively held back. Then there is the problem of Vulkan support in the open source driver, and there has been attempts in the past to make that happen, but good Vulkan support is a requirement for gaming on Linux. You can technically do OpenGL, and there are some ways to like get around the whole need of DXVK with Proton, which is DirectX to Vulkan, but the primary way that most people are going to do things is through Proton, through DXVK, and nowadays, we do have the NVK driver in the Mesa project. This is NVIDIA Vulkan, and it might not be perfect, but it's actually good nowadays. Like, you can actually game with the open source NVIDIA stack, which wasn't really a viable thing that long ago, unless you wanted to play things, well, firstly, OpenGL, but secondly really slowly. And these improvements have been coming slowly over the years, but this is not the only stuff happening in open source NVIDIA land. So from a few years back, you may recall the open GPU kernel modules from NVIDIA. This isn't a third party project. This was directly from NVIDIA. The problem is these open source kernel modules, even though they are being used by the modern NVIDIA drivers, they're not upstreamed into the kernel because they're simply not written in a way to make that viable. And NVIDIA, at least from what I can tell, has no interest in doing so. They're not developing these in an open source way either. They are just releasing the new version and all of the code changes at once, which obviously does not really work if you're trying to submit things to the kernel. So as it currently stands, the only NVIDIA driver upstreamed into the Linux kernel isn't a driver from NVIDIA, it's the open source driver, the Novo driver, the one that's been around for a very long time and for a while just wasn't really that viable to actually use. Now, you may recall, I believe it was sometime mid last year, another project attempting to take on the role of Novo, specifically for the newer cards post the addition of GSP. GSP is supported by Novo, but this is a new driver only for those cards. I don't know why it's named like this. There is no reason why it needs to be so. It is called Nova. So you have Novo, the older GPU for the older cards and the newer cards, and then Nova, only for the newer cards. Couldn't it be called literally anything else? Open source naming. It probably should be called something else because this driver was coming from Red Hat and they have another thing called Nova. So you have two things coming from Red Hat known as Nova. That's definitely not going to be annoying for SEO. No, 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 no. Perfect. Don't change it. Keep it exactly the way it is. And... Like a lot of stuff that's happening in the graphics space, this driver was being written in Rust. Rust. 
Scary Rust. As you may recall when I did my last video on Nova, there was an attempt to get this driver into the kernel. Now, the problem is, at the time and still now, a lot of Rust stuff just has not been merged into the kernel. There is a lot of work to make it happen, and there's a lot of out of tree stuff, but a lot of that foundational work still has not been merged, and the driver did rely on a lot of out-of-tree things, so whilst getting feedback on the driver was certainly viable at this state, it was definitely very far from being merged, even if not for the reason of the driver itself, because of other things surrounding it. This is kind of just a state of everything involving Rust for the kernel. It's been going on for a couple of years. There's a lot of work being done. There's a lot of really cool drivers being made, but getting them into the upstream kernel, there's a lot of pushback against it. There's a lot of developers who really don't want it to happen. There's a lot of developers who really do support it. So it's kind of this like internal war over the C developers who don't want to learn Rust and then the Rust developers who are happy to learn C and think that Rust will solve a lot of the C problems. There are a lot of people that want to make this a very simple, this team is right, that team is right, oh, Rust should be in the kernel, Rust shouldn't be in the kernel, but I do think this is a lot more complicated than people want to admit it is, and I don't see it dying down anytime soon. So whilst this RFC did get feedback, it's an RFC, it didn't get merged. More recently, there is a new patch set dubbed Nova Core. Add initial driver stub. The Nova project, including Nova Core and Nova DRM in the long term, is intended to serve as the successor of Novo for all GSP-based GPUs. In order to avoid the chicken and egg problem to require a user to upstream Rust abstractions, but at the same time require the Rust abstraction to implement the driver, Nova Core kicks off as a driver stub and is subsequently developed upstream. Basically, this is a core, not yet functional driver, but it's a start. It's getting the stub into upstream, and then as more Rust stuff is brought into the kernel, more of the code for the driver can also be added. And this is the problem that all of the Rust projects have right now. There is a chicken and egg problem. Obviously, there's the whole war, but alongside the war, for drivers to be developed for the kernel, the Rust stuff needs to be there. But for the Rust stuff to be there, the drivers need to exist. So, whilst the drivers do exist, they've got to, like, convince them to merge some of the stuff to start bringing the code in to bring more of the code in, Basically, I feel bad for any people involved in the graphic space who really want the Rust stuff to be there because a lot of the projects are basically just being stalled and there's not much they can do about it. Now, speaking of a project being stalled, or better yet, just straight up dying. Straight up just being archived, being over, but then getting a restart, there was a project called Rust Cuda an ecosystem of libraries and tools for writing and executing extremely fast GPU code written in Rust. But the project laid silent since July of 2022, and then a reboot notice was added to the readme, and the project is once again back in development. Along with that, a blog post was released, rebooting the Rust CUDA project. We're excited to announce the reboot of the Rust CUDA project. Rust CUDA enables you to write and run CUDA kernels in Rust, executing directly on NVIDIA GPUs using NVVM IR. Our immediate focus is on modernizing the project and integrating with other GPU-related efforts in the Rust ecosystem. And here's the relation to other GPU projects in the Rust ecosystem. Rust GPU. This project is similar to Rust CUDA, but targets Spur V for Vulkan GPUs. Our long-term vision for the two projects includes merging developer-facing APIs to provide a unified experience for GPU programming in Rust. Developers should not need to worry about underlying platforms unless doing specialized work. This would make GPU programming in Rust feel as seamless as its abstractions for CPU architectures or operating systems. And the maintainer on this project is a maintainer 
on that project as well. Rust-C PTX backend. The Rust-C compiler experimental NVPTX backend generates CUDA's low-level PTX IR. We plan to collaborate with this effort to determine how it can complement or integrate with Rust CUDA's NVVM IR approach and CUDA RC. This script provides a host side abstraction for CUDA programming in Rust. We aim to explore how Rust CUDA can interoperate with CUDA C or consolidate efforts. So the TLDR of everything here is if you're someone interested in both NVIDIA and the Rust language ecosystem, or preferably both at once, there is a lot of really cool work both starting up or restarting. So if you're the kind of person that maybe, I don't know, likes to annoy people about Rust, now you have more than ever to do so with, but more importantly, there is a lot of really cool stuff happening in this ecosystem, and I don't see it slowing down. I see the graphic space being a really big, I guess, driving force for Rust adoption, and especially on the kernel side, is a big part of the reason why people actually want it. There are a lot of subsystems that just don't really care about Rust, and that's totally understandable, but the graphics side, they really want it, and they're really pushing for it. But what do you think? Are you an NVIDIA user? Perhaps you also use Rust? Let me know down below. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, subscribe to the Libera Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I'm still going to buy AMD, though.